What's up, hobby homies? Welcome to This Mini Sucks. Today, we're gonna open up and paint a 20-year-old metal GW model that happens to be one of my favorite sculpts of all time. <laughs> The Casket of Souls is a really sweet model. It's actually what got me into Warhammer Fantasy in the first place. Um, I was always big into 40k, but when a family friend gave me a box of old Warhammer stuff, I saw the casket and I was immediately hooked on Tomb Kings. I remember cracking it open on a Friday night. I must have spent like six hours trying to get this thing put together. This time around, as I opened the box and took the pieces out, the thing that struck me the most was how much detail they crammed onto these hand sculpted models. I mean, people are always raving about how good GW plastic is nowadays. And most of the new models are push fit, but you know, let's be honest, there's like an insane amount of detail on them. But you know, I was actually more impressed by how much detail they were able to get on these metal sculpts. I mean, it's insane because they were done by hand and they're so heavy and they feel so substantial in, in your hands. It's almost like you're holding an actual ancient <laughs> artifact or something. It's like really cool. When preparing these for priming, it was actually pretty easy to clean them up. As long as you have some metal files, your hobby clippers should be able to take the metal flashing off no problem, and the metal files can take care of the mold lines and other remnants of the casting process. Since you can use metal files instead of you know the usual like flimsy sanding sticks that we use on plastic models, I actually had these cleaned up way quicker than it usually takes, and it was pretty easy, and they came out looking really clean. I had already figured out my bone recipe for this army in a previous video where I tackled um, a full battalion box. So I'll follow that same process here. I start with a black mecha primer from Vallejo, <laughs> from, or Vallejo, however you like to say it. It goes on so thin and smooth and it hardens up really nice after like 24 hours uh, and creates the perfect base, especially on models like this, which can be prone to chipping. Next is a heavy zenithal of ivory mecha primer that is almost more of a base coat with just a little bit of black left in the areas with the heaviest shadows. While the primer was curing, I had some time to think about what I wanted to do for the base. The codex has it on some custom cut piece of styrene or something. It looks really thin, but I wanted it to match the rest of my army and have like a nice black frame around the model. So I dug through my box of fantasy bits and pieces that I'd been collecting for this Tomb Kings project, and I grabbed some 50 millimeter bases. I figured I could super glue them together and fill in the cracks with something like Milliput to give me a really solid foundation to put the casket on top of. This was my first time working with Milliput actually, and honestly it was pretty gross. I don't think I um, ever want to use it again. It took like 10 minutes of constantly kneading it to get it even to a point where I guess it was soft enough to use, it was still pretty tough. I filled in the empty areas and smoothed it over with a wet finger. Um, while it was drying, I had to wash my hands like three times to get it off, so not a big fan of Milliput, but it got the job done. I had some time before I could move on to the next steps, so I cleaned and organized my workspace to prep. With a fresh palette in hand and all of my primer and milliput cured, it was time to get some actual paint down. I decided to start with the casket guards. Since there are two of them, I just wanted to knock them out together. I started by applying a wash of one part Citadel Skeleton Horde Contrast Paint, one part Rykman Flesh Shade, and two parts Lehia Medium to all of the bones. I then worked them up with Vallejo Bone White, moving up then to Dead White. The blue tiles were a lot of fun on these guys. I started with a base of turquoise from Vallejo and moved up with sky blue. And then I used a bit of sky blue mixed with dead white for some edge highlighting and dots of reflected light on the ceramic. The gold was Citadel Retributor Armor washed with Reichland Flesh Shade right out of the pot. 
I worked up the final highlights with Arc Armor Gold, and my last layer was Arc Armor mixed with a little bit of Liquitex White Ink. Once the guards were looking good, I moved on to the base. I started by chucking some sand on, but I left a bunch of gaps to fill in later with Agrelian Earth. I like mixing sand and this baked earth texture when I'm doing like desert scenes. It gives you an area to drop some rocks and vegetation in a more natural way. Um, I then sealed everything down with super glue, thin, and blasted it with Xandri dust from Citadel. I applied the same process to all of the bones on the base as before and picked out the beetles with some jade green from Vallejo. For the slab itself, I actually used contrast paint. I started by stippling some texture onto the surface and then washing it with a heavy coating of Glyph Chargers Gray. I then edge highlighted with bone white to really make it look worn down. And then I stippled on some sky blue to add some color interest. And I was really happy with how deep and rich it ended up looking. I also think it comes out really organic this way and the contrast paint ties all the colors together underneath. Since the base was a little bit bigger than the examples in the codex, I wanted to add some extra skulls and other bits to fill it out a bit. I found a rat while digging through an old scaven box that I thought would be fun to use. So I filled in the more sparse areas with tufts and skulls, and I threw that rat peeking out from behind the Lich Priest and was ready to call it done. The Lich Priest was probably the least amount of fun I had with this project. I wasn't really sure what to do with some of the colors, but I knew getting stuck on decision points is never helpful. So I just threw some purple on the cloak to see what would happen. It's really easy to strip metal models if you aren't happy with them. You just throw them in some rubbing alcohol and scrub them with a toothbrush, and they basically come out shinier than they were before. Luckily, I hate stripping models, so <laughs> I just decided to press on the purple. But after base coating everything else, I just looked at it and all I could think was, this mini sucks. <laughs> And it's not fun to get to this part in the process, but it happens. Um, I just couldn't visualize how I was going to be able to get this model even looking okay, let alone something I would want to share on the internet. But I had come this far and my cameras were rolling, so I pressed on. And about an hour later, um, it wasn't good. It still needed work, but I could now see that it was possible. And that's important because the next time that I think a mini sucks, it's good to know that I'm only an hour away from it not sucking. And that can help you a lot um, when you're feeling stuck. So I moved on to the flesh and I started with Death World Forest from Citadel. It's one of my favorite greens and I think it ended up being a perfect base for this like sickly, gross, undead skin. Um, I then used Graphite and Arctic Blue from Scale 75 to work up the grays. I used Terracotta from Vallejo for the red and layered that up with Scarlet Red and Bloody Red. I finished him off with some metal color from Vallejo on the blades of his weapon and was ready to finally paint the casket itself. I went with Glyph Charger's gray contrast paint again here and then picked out all of the gold trim. For the blood on the skulls, I wasn't initially going to go this over the top with it, but I was having a lot of trouble getting the eagles to stay on during assembly. And there was like a big puddle of glue that I forgot to clean off. Um, but I mixed up some Citadel Blood for the Blood God and Army Painter Strong Tone to get a really nice, like slick and shiny looking blood effect that really popped when put on top of an actual puddle of super glue. After that, I added some blue for a pop of color and put some final edge highlights on to finish it off. Slowly lowering the casket down into its final resting place felt great. I am super happy with how this model turned out. It was great to go through the process of working with metal again. It's a lot of fun and it's cool to see how far the hobby has come, but also where it came from. So here's my take on the Casket of Souls.
hope you enjoyed the journey of bringing this 20 year old model back from the dead. It was a lot of fun for me and I really enjoyed the nostalgia trip. I am very happy with how it turned out and I think it's a great centerpiece for the rest of my Tomb Kings army. If you want to follow along on my quest to 2000 points before the release of The Old World, feel free to subscribe below. If Warhammer Fantasy or Tomb Kings aren't your bag, I also have plans for videos on Kill Team, Warcry, Curse City, Crisis Protocol, and a bunch of others. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see next or what maybe some of your favorite old metal models are. It'd be really cool if we could give some people who've maybe never attempted them some ideas to start with. So with all that said, I wanted to thank you so much for hanging out and I will see you on the next one.